All right, hi guys. I hope all of you guys are doing good. And now I'm going to start a series of uh, small videos where I'll be discussing five PYQs in five minutes. So without spending much of your time on lengthy explanation, you guys can watch it out and finish five topics very quickly in just five minutes, right? So let's get started with this very uh, series. And I'm pretty sure all of you, for all of you guys, that this is going to be a very helpful series. So please don't forget to subscribe, like and forward and share this one with all your friends let's get started with the very first question that we have is about a patient of glaucoma who is suffering from bronchial asthma which of the following anti-glaucoma drug should be avoided so which drug would you avoid here timolol which type of drug is timolol guys timolol is one of the non-selective beta blocker this non-selective beta blocker will be blocking beta 1 as well they are also going to block beta 2 because of the beta 2 blockade, there are high chances that there will be bronchoconstriction. This bronchoconstriction can actually cause precipitation of bronchial asthma. Do you guys know that normally beta 2, what does normal beta 2 does? Normally your beta 2 will be causing bronchodilatation and when you block it, there will be bronchoconstriction. So I think you already got your answer. Timolol is something that should be avoided. Let's quickly rule out other option as well. Dipivaphrine, it's one of the pro-drug of epinephrine. It is one of the pro drug of epinephrine it is one of the alpha 1 agonist no they will not have you know precipitation of the bronchial asthma apart from that if i talk about betaxolol it is one of the selective beta 1 blocker they can also be utilized in fact they are the preferred beta blocker they are the preferred beta blocker in bronchial asthma patient apraclonidine bremonidine they are the alpha 2 agonist once again they will have no precipitation in bronchial asthma they can also be uh, utilized if you are going to ask or if the examiner is going to ask you overall best drug for bronchial asthma patient this is going to be your latanoprost right latanoprost bimatoprost they are the pgf2 alpha analog let's see the next question about a 29 year old lady who is a smoker on nicotine replacement therapy for D addiction. She now requires alternative therapy for the same. Which of the following drug is going to be useful? Flumazenil. It's considered as an antidote of benzodiazepine. No antidote for benzodiazepine or Z drug ka overdose. So one topic is also sorted. What about acamprosate? What about veronicline naltrexone? Right? So among the given choices, the one which is a partial agonist of nicotine is going to be veronicline. This is the best drug or overall most preferred drug for smoking de addiction or nicotine uh, uh, de addiction therapy. Veronicline nicotine ko clean karta hai. Look at the option nicotine ko clean karne wala drug. What about your uh, naltrexone? Naltrexone is the orally effective opioid receptor antagonist. Na? Opioid receptor antagonist orally effective. Na? So we, we can utilize them in maintenance therapy after the opioid addiction and right? after opioid addiction we can utilize this uh, to prevent the relapse a composite they are going to be utilized in alcohol you know, alcohol, uh, alcohol may, alcoholic patient may and right? as a de-addiction therapy also we can utilize they will decrease the craving also next question that we have this is the uh, same information about veronicline that i already told you that this is one of the partial agonist at the uh, nicotine and always remember when partial agonist act the full agonist will be uh, will be uh, less effective so in presence of a full agonist the partial agonist is always act as an antagonist okay question number three about a patient suffering from bronchial asthma comes to your hospital which of the following drug is used for acute exacerbation now if you guys are noticing all these questions are from june 2022 so again uh, last two three year ka question aapko aana chahiye okay? june 2022 Ke liye, which of the, all of the following can be used in acute exacerbation except nebulization by salbutamol definitely is, is something that can be utilized oxygen is also IV magnesium sulfate is also shown very good result in acute exacerbation what about leukotriene receptor antagonist drugs like your monte leucast zafir leucast and pran leucast their name itself is having leukotriene ka antagonist they can be utilized for the profile axis but they are not effective for acute exacerbation acute ke liye hai na? acute attack ke liye they are not going to be effective remember they are the bronchial asthma case so there are three questions on bronchial asthma in june you know, in your june 2022 next one is about a patient uh, with bladder cancer on chemotherapy is the known case of cod developed tumor lysis syndrome having very high level of uric acid which of the following drug can provide fastest reduction in uric acid fastest reduction in uric acid the answer to this question is rasburicase there is one more drug from the same class p glotikase rasburicase which class of drug are they they are the recombinant uricase these recombinant uricase is actually going to cause breakdown of 
यूरिक एसिड दे आर गोइंग टू कॉज मेटाबोलिज्म ऑफ यूरिक एसिड है ना टू एलेंटॉइन एंड दिस एलेंटॉइन इज अ वाटर सॉलिबल मेटाबोलाइट दिस कैन इजिली बी एक्सक्रीटेड नाउ फेबिक्स स्टैट इट इज वन ऑफ द जैंथीन ऑक्सीडेज इन बेटर इट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इन क्रोनिक गाउट ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इन क्रोनिक गाउट Allopurinol is also right. So Fabricius start both of them are uh, you know xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Either of them can be used. Preferred is allopurinol. अगर ये ineffective है, not available है, और the patient is non-responsive, we can use Fabricius start. Mannitol has no role in this case scenario. Remember, rasburicase is the fastest to reduce, right? This is one of the screenshot that has been taken from your Goodman Gilman. You can read read it out. They are the recombinant uricase and they are more effective than allopurinol. More effective. They are the fastest to reduce uricase. Okay. Fifth question about a 25, 28 year old female with the first trimester pregnancy comes to your hospital with a high level of T3 and T4. Okay, so ganti baj gayi already, but again let me just quickly finish T3 and T4. Which of the following drug is most appropriate to use in this patient of hyperthyroidism? We will be using anti-thyroid. We are going to use anti-thyroid drug. So do you guys know that first trimester may which is the most or uh, safest that we have propyl thiouracil? Why can't I use uh, carbimazole or methimazole? Because carbimazole and methimazole they are associated with the scalp defect, right? They are associated with the scalp defect. That is why we are not going to use. We call them as aplasia cutis. The term that we use them is aplasia cutis. Potassium iodide again is not the most appropriate. Propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker, and non-selective beta blocker is actually contraindicated. So this was five MCQ in five minutes. I hope all of you guys have enjoyed and follow me for more such updates. We are having more such videos in line that is coming for all of you guys. I hope all of you guys have enjoyed. See you all in next videos. Thank you.